Look at all of this squash that we've got to find something to do with. We already have a bunch of it in the freezer. We have some pre-baked squash casserole, and then we have some pre-battered squash that we'll be able to fry. And that's what I'm going to do with a lot of this today. We're going to cut it up, pre-batter it, and freeze it for later on. But be sure to stick around for the entire video because there's a trick to it that you gotta know or your squash is gonna turn out gooey and nasty. First thing we're gonna do is make sure we rinse all of this really well. I'm not sure that I did that when I brought it in from the garden, so let's take care of that right now. And the next step is optional really, but I'm gonna go ahead and peel the squash. My, my kids don't really like the feeling of the peeling when they eat squash it kind of squeaks against their teeth and eh, they don't really like that so i'm going to peel mine you really wouldn't need to unless you've let the squash sit on the vine for a while and the peeling is beginning to get thick and tough and now we need to slice it i'm going to cut off the stem end and the butt end that will go straight into the compost and now we're going to slice this squash most of my cuts are going to be roughly, I don't know, a quarter of an inch thick, but I do like to kind of have a little bit of variation in the thickness of the slices, because when I cook it, I like for some of the pieces to be nice and crispy, while others are still a little bit soft. That way I can get a different experience with each bite. And we've got a bunch of this to cut up. But once you get it all sliced, the next thing you need to do, and this is pretty important, we're going to need to blanch these squash slices. And to do that, we're going to bring a big pot of water to a boil and add the squash. And then we're going to set a timer for five minutes. Make sure that you set your timer for five minutes because we don't want to cook the squash. We only want to heat it up enough to denature the enzymes that would degrade the squash over time in your freezer, affecting the taste and the vitamin content of your squash. While your squash is blanching for five minutes, you should be preparing an ice water bath. And as soon as that timer goes off, you're going to pour your squash into the ice bath to kill the heat so it doesn't keep on cooking. And when you're finished, your squash should still be fairly firm. Now we're going to batter our squash. I'm just going to use a mixture of cornmeal with a little bit of flour added. Toss it all in a bag and give it a good shake so that it's all covered. And then we're going to remove them from the bag and shake off any excess cornmeal that might be on them. I'm using a strainer placed inside of a large bowl so that I can catch the excess cornmeal and pour it back in the bag to use it later on. And now comes the magic. Here's the step that you gotta know if you're gonna do this right. I'm gonna take my battered squash pieces and place them on a baking sheet. Notice that I'm not allowing them to really touch each other. We're gonna be freezing them this way and I don't want them to stick together. When the baking sheet fills up, I'm gonna place a sheet of aluminum foil or parchment paper or wax paper or something like that on top of it. And then we can stack another layer of squash on top of that. And you can stack as many layers as you have room for in the freezer or as many as you feel comfortable carrying. But when you're finished, you're gonna take your tray and place it on a flat surface in the deep freeze and let it sit until your squash is nice and frozen. Now we're going to take the tray back to the kitchen. We'll get a gallon size Ziploc bag. That's what I'm going to use anyway, a freezer bag. And we'll begin to put our frozen squash pieces into the bag. Now, what this will do is it will keep all of the squash from freezing together and clumping up. And that way you can just take out as much as you want when you go to cook it. And it will also keep your batter from getting soggy like ours did last year. Thanks for watching this video. I hope there was something there that helped you out. The first time we tried freezing squash for frying, we just battered it all and tossed it in a bag and then put it in the freezer. It all froze together. And when we went to fry it, it turned into a gooey, nasty mess. It was pretty gross. So I think this little trick right here is going to be a game changer for us. And hopefully it will be for you too. If you've enjoyed this video, please head on down there and hit the thumbs up button. And subscribe if you haven't already. Then you can click on one of these right here for more daily sustainable living.